G'day folks, Steve from Vintage Restorations Australia here. This is the second and the final in this little short series where we take this caravan and turn it into this. So stay tuned and see how we go about that. So with all the lining complete, it's time to fill and sand in preparation for the installation of the vinyl. This requires basically filling with an epoxy filler all the holes and gaps and then sanding them flat. I didn't think it would be that hard to lay vinyl so I watched it on YouTube. I I'd honestly recommend a commercial vinyl layer. This is a little bit kind of beyond a bit of a DIY kind of thing. And then decided to employ Steve to do it all. Unfortunately I missed filming Steve doing the first bit but essentially he sealed the timber and then put in the coving with contact adhesive. The next step is to accurately measure the vinyl cut it to shape while allowing for enough to run up and over the wheel arches and up the walls on either side. The whole floor is cut out in this manner before it's laid. Yes, so for the edges where it's carving up the wall we've used contact adhesive and then for the field which is like I guess the main part of the floor that's an acrylic based, water based uh, vinyl adhesive. <laughs> This here is what we call well gap. So we, uh, we use a heat gun and we put a PVC in there, meld it all together, sky the top off and hey presto, we have a sealed floor. Play vinyl they said. See the world they said. Being a contact adhesive, we place it on the area we want to stick and we also place it on the vinyl as well. Let it tack off. Oh, it's pretty pongy in here. And as a result right now, I'm seeing in black and white and through time. Welcome to Barry the Burner, as I call it. Look at that precision cutting. That's three days of work experience right there for you people. Cutting my weld gaps. All done, Steve? Yes, sir. We're finished. First step is to measure up to make sure your sheet is going to fit. You march is using the hand shears to cut the stainless steel sheeting to the ceiling. This stainless steel sheeting is 0.55 of a mil thick, so it's quite relatively thin. It's about as thin as you can get the stainless. So we're applying contact adhesive to the ceiling. Uh, we're going to also apply it to the sheet that we're putting up. We brush the contact adhesive on using this circular motion to get it nice and rough. <laughs> The contact adhesive goes on both sides, on the ceiling and on the back of the stainless steel. Then it's time to stick the sheet in. You only get one go at this, so make sure you align everything correctly and then clamp it up in position. Got the second stainless ceiling sheet in there. Glued that up now. Uh, these clamps are very handy. <laughs> The service hatch has the same stainless steel sealing applied to it. It's just glued and then riveted. Tail light, stop light and the uh, indicators there. They're good quality glass lens. Um, this is actually metal and decent quality chrome and then a good solid rubber seal and boot on the back. So these are the clearance lights that we use. They're a hell of light as you can see.
on. Right hand blinker. Lovely, it all works. People can see us from outer space. With the ceiling in, we can now put this flashing around the um, hatch, the roof hatch that is. Uh, we've also installed these folding latches, a lock and a handle. So that just opens like that and they lock into place. Marchin's polishing this window with a buffing wheel and buffing compounds. Uh, he's basically cutting off the oxide, getting it back to a nice mirror shine. Uh, we like to do this before we install the windows rather than after. We're going to convert this to an opening window, so we've salvaged the uh, the frame, cleaned it all up. Front window all refilled. Marchin's unpicking the edge of this. door here disassembled. We found a bit of corrosion on this hinge which we've removed and tannic acid. Cut the hole for the uh, porthole window. Um, put a new block in there because that's what the lock has to attach to. It, it has to go in there and um, screw in. And uh, we sort of beat out that corner that was a bit dingled. So that's all good now. So these trims around the edge, we pre-polished them like you just saw March and doing. Then we fit them around and uh, just replace the originals. Uh, we custom cut those so that they're the right width and things and they fit in there nicely. Pretty much do that on uh, all the windows. You see here on the rear window, it's the same. Uh, we fit them right around there and uh, on this other side window. So Paul's come back and started fitting off. Uh, there's the double pole switches. As I said, all 240 volt stuff has to be done by a licensed electrician and that's why he's here. Isn't that right, Paul? Yep. So mounted just here by the door is two 15 amp power inlets. So they just run from a 15 amp power supply into here. So a total of 30 amps supplying the van. And that just runs through the wall and up into the back of the subboard, which is just there. Subboard in the van with two separate switches, two 15 amp circuits. One runs all the GPOs, the lights and that kind of thing. And the other just runs to the fridges. You'll notice the switching in here. We have the uh, DC light switches. It's a little bit dirty, but we'll clean that up. Um, so anything that's DC 12 volt is marked with this black switch. And the other ones, normal 240 volt, are all regular switches. You notice here, this is the double pole switch. We've installed those right throughout the van. This is the five amp power supply that supplies power to the internal LED lights. So it's coming out of 240, going into a five amp power supply, and then we run that back into the wall, up through here to an on off switch. Now from that switch, the power runs up to there, and it also runs through this wall and comes out at the hatch. There's the lights all up and running now, the covers on, and the four hatch lights in. Well there's the van completely locked up with all the electrical and everything done. She's off for a rego inspection tomorrow. And then, uh, then we begin the painting and polishing of the exterior and the interior fit out.
plates for the uh, shelves and things that we make up. You can see there we've made a template just to ensure that it all fits nicely. So that's the bench that we've had made off that template. And as you can see, it's going to fit in here. It fits quite nicely. So this is the edge that's going to the wall. You've got to remove that plastic protective cover that's on it. It's nice, mate, what you've done. That's nice. Yeah, I'm trying, man. March and pop that into position, run a level across the top of it, and I'll put a screw in underneath it. This is the first corner bench in. Our local fabricator can't weld these in, so we've only got the option of gluing them in. So we've essentially finished all of the um, bench installation now. We've got the two long benches here, sink at the back. Uh, we've installed that little hand wash sink into the uh, into this this bench tub. Uh, underneath, you can see there we've we've got under benches to increase the bench storage uh, capacity. If you spin around to the front, we've got. Uh, Big freezer installed there with a couple of little benches and again another underbench there. Up over the windows we've got these upper shelves. So we've got one there and one up the top. We've got to the point of uh, needing to polish. Uh, this band is only going to be polished through the midsection so from the roof line down to this join line here. much ready to be painted now. It's all been solvent cleaned after it was rubbed back. That's the etch primer shot so it's all painted up and ready to go. We've got to give that a rub back uh, with some wet and dry and then we can shoot the first colour coat. So there'll be two coats on top of that. Sharp line. How did you do it? Magic of YouTube. Oh my goodness. And sticky tape. Things you can find on YouTube. The final jobs we have to do is removing all the uh, stainless steel protective covers. Uh, this stuff here uh, it simply peels off. see that freezer fitted in. It's uh, had a travel strap fitted there so that's locked in as is the bottom of that little display fridge on this big oven. It's got a, an attachment there that goes around for travel. But that's the benches all in, all nice and tidy. Stainless steel ceiling. Quite a big oven. It's about the largest one they could fit in here. It only just fits. There again, cake display fridge. It's the hatch all open. That's pretty compact in this uh, little van. So that plumbing is pretty straightforward. You've got the hand wash sink there, a mixer tap there. Uh, the hand wash is knee operated for ease of use. Got the wastewater going there, coming down from the hand sink. Uh, 
an LPG or propane gas um, hot water system. It's like a 14 litre storage system, so you've always got 14 litres. And you can see here we've got a shore flow 12 volt pump. From the rear through the opening window, you get a nice view of the sinks, benches. Uh, we've got the oven, it's quite a large oven. Uh, we put the stainless steel ceiling in and all those connections up there are quite nice and tight. That's what they're looking for when you're looking for a food van. You don't want nooks and crannies where uh, food and crud's going to get stuck. You need to be able to keep them quite clean and uh, tidy. So what you see here represents about three and a half months worth of work for myself and Marchant. Uh, the van's pretty much done. There's no more we can do to it. Uh, the client will be here in about an hour or so to pick it up. So we hope that she loves it. Um, we're pretty happy with it. The outcome is great given that it started off looking like this and it now looks like this. Uh, it's a big job to restore one of these. Um, I recommend you have a go. You can learn to do anything. That's what YouTube is about, sharing knowledge and having a go. Um, you don't always have to be a professional to repair things, recycle things, restore things, repurpose uh, any of the re's. That's about it for this. Uh, we hope to see you in the next episode of whatever we're restoring. Till then, take care of yourselves and try to be nice to each other. So yeah. <laughs>